What is up everyone, Nick here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to take your Iron Man suit to the next level. Let's get into it. Now before we start, I just want to mention that everything I'm going to be covering in this video as far as motorizing the back flaps can be applied to literally anything else you'd like to do. It doesn't just have to be ailerons, it can be a missile pod, it can be... Those are kind of the only two things I have in my head right now. But I'm sure you can come up with some other fun ideas. Also, this project is not for the faint of heart, so big warning. Oh Jesus. Now before starting a project like this, I do expect that you have at least some base knowledge uh, in coding Arduinos for motorizing Iron Man helmets, because a lot of what you do for an Iron Man helmet will be applied here, but there are going to be extra steps and some modifications that we're going to do to this general premise. So there's a lot of info that I'll be kind of skimping over in this video, but I will be linking to other tutorials from Frankly Build, Kiara's Workshop, and a plethora of other creators so that you have all the knowledge that you would need to tackle something like this. Because a lot of people have been asking me how I motorize this, and I know it's a lot of information for my very first tutorial, but like, you asked for it, I'm going to give it to you, and then we'll cover other stuff. Cool? Cool. Honestly, there are two better methods to do what I did. One of them is design your own STL files with the servo mounts and everything accounted for, or two, commission someone to design you said STL files. Both of those options weren't really a choice for me. So we're gonna be covering option number three, which is modifying the actual 3D printed parts to do what we want them to. This seems to be a common occurrence when it comes to cosplay STL files. You'll have all these neat panels that are separated from the base shell, but you have no way to actually motorize them. There are no servo mounts, there are no hinges. A lot of what you would need to motorize them are just missing. Or they're designed in a really weird way that makes it impossible to motorize them. Maybe your Iron Man files don't have the ailerons separated from the shell. In that case, you will need to modify the suit in Blender. I'll be linking a video in the description below to a tutorial by Kiara's workshop covering how to modify base SDL files. So you want to motorize back flaps or ailerons or back stabilizers, call them whatever you want, here's how. So now that we've established that we're going to be modifying the actual 3D printed parts themselves, Here's all the tools you're going to need for this. So in terms of tools, you're absolutely going to need a Dremel to make cuts so you can create the slots you need for the servo arms. You're also going to need hinges and whatnot. Um, then you're going to need the standard stuff that you would need to motorize. So you're going to need servos. I highly recommend going with some 25 kilogram high torque servos. You're going to need some M3 screws for the hinges. This is optional, but I would highly recommend picking up some M3 threaded inserts. These are really useful for creating mechanical bonds within the print. That way you don't fuse things together permanently. You're also gonna need some hot glue uh, to create non-permanent bonds. That way you can still readjust things before you finally commit to a decision. And then you can permanently mount it together using CA glue with an accelerator. And to really seal the deal, you can use a soldering iron and melt the plastic together. And you're also going to need your soldering iron to do all the soldering to the microcontroller. And you're also going to need all of your standard soldering supplies like some solder, wires, plugs of your choice, and of course the microcontroller. But instead of using your typical MG90 servo like you would for a helmet, I highly recommend that you check these out. Now these are high torque RC servo motors. They're used for stuff like boats, airplanes, and whatnot. And the reason why you're gonna wanna go with something like this is one, they are much more powerful. They are high torque. This one has 25 kilograms of torque. And especially if you're motorizing something like ailerons, these are extremely heavy compared to a faceplate, which means one, your servo, if you're using an MG90, is gonna have a super hard time getting these up and you're gonna have to be much more picky about where you place your pusher arm. And also second, 
When you're gonna close these, they're just gonna slam shut and it's not gonna look that good. I have videos of that on my Instagram page with just regular MG90 servos and it didn't really work out that well. These, however, if you set them to max speed, they're pretty slow. Like on my suit, they're at max speed and they take their time when they're doing each movement. Basically with these servos, you're not gonna have to worry about where you place the pivot point of your servo on the aileron. It's just gonna move the weight, no problem. I'll include links to everything you would need to make a setup like this in the links down below. And of course, you're gonna need some 3D printed lever arms to help motorize this thing. Luckily for you, I took my experience from motorizing this thing and designed my own system that would make it easier for anybody to motorize it. What did I call it again? <laughs> I call it AIM. No, it's not Advanced Ideal Mechanics. It stands for Aileron Motorization Made Easy. It's a super simple system I literally designed in an hour in Tinkercad that includes a bunch of parts that you would need to motorize literally anything. It includes different lengths of lever arms, angled base plates, and pivots that you can use to mount literally anywhere. With some servo mounts off of Thingiverse, you're set to start this project. The first question you should be asking yourself is, what are we motorizing? So let's say that your project also doesn't have hinges so that your parts can move. Look no further than Thingiverse. They have a bunch of different print in place hinges that you can use in something like this. I do recommend, however, that you take some time in Tinkercad to build your own mounts. Instead of just fusing the parts together, um, make mounts using threaded inserts. What are threaded inserts? They are these nice brass pieces that you can melt into prints. That way you have a solid connection so you can put screws. Now, why would you take this extra effort to do this? Well, when disassembling for paint or sanding or maintenance, you're gonna be able to unscrew everything and disassemble it all without having to deal with the fact that you've just fused two parts together with a hinge, like I did. Now you might think that this is like super complicated. No, you take a box, you make it the size you want, you take cylinders, you turn them into holes, and then you fuse the two parts together, making a square with a hole in it that's the size of a threaded insert. Do that four times, and then print a base plate for it. Voila, you've just created a raft with threaded insert points, so you can fuse it into your suit, and then just screw whatever you want onto it. I actually did this on the chest piece so I could mount a cabinet latch in place and just unscrew them in case I had problems, which I did. A few of my cabinet latches exploded while I was wearing the suit and I couldn't get out. Guess what? Within 10 minutes, I was able to unscrew them, put a new one in, and the suit was working just like it was before. Instead of crying in a corner because my cabinet latch is fused to my 3D print and I can't remove it. Now that we have the hinges figured out for the actual parts, now it's time to look at how are we gonna mount the servos in the suit. So with that being said, I'm gonna take my suit apart, that way I can actually show you what we're doing. I am gonna crack open the suit in just a second, but I just wanna show you something. So, right here, you'll notice that these arms I used are actually the arms that um, mechanize the jaw on Walsh's uh, Iron Man helmets, specifically his Mark II and III, and I think his Mark VII, II, and a few other models. This was my first crude effort to motorize uh, my back ailerons. So you'll notice right here, I cut it open with the Dremel, allowing enough space for the um, servo arm to move across. I also used a washer right here. The only problem is I have nothing going between the washer and the arm. So there's a little bit of slack, but that's fine. And then my first design that I used for um, the mounting system. So this is just fused on. It's a slight slope. These are two separate pieces. It's really rough, but it worked out just fine in the end. Hi there. <laughs> Alrighty, so on the inside, you'll notice that these are super, super short, and these are basically the same thing, except I went into Tinkercad, sliced it in half, and shortened the crap out of it. But it's the exact same thing. You have the servo horn arm mount thing thingamajig right here, screw, quick little washer to keep it together, and then it mounts to this thing here, which is just fused onto the plastic. Not the best, but hey, it works for the suit and it looks just fine. I've never had a person come up to my suit, look inside like we're doing right now and just be like, oh, you could have done this way better. Like, no, this, it works. But hopefully with the system I designed, 
this should be a lot cleaner on your suits. I also might as well show you while we're at it how this actually comes together. So I initially was gonna mount the top of the chest in the back using magnets, but that didn't really work out that well, so I switched to cabinet latches. And this is why these pieces come off, and it actually kind of helps with clearance so I can see what I'm doing better. But you basically just push, push, you can hear it unclip. This one you can't hear as well. And then these magnets are overlapping on top of each other. Um, I got this idea from uh, Frankly Built in one of his Star Boost updates. So I was gonna do this for the top two, but it just didn't work that well. It was really hard to attach. And same thing on this side, and voila. And you'll see there's a wire here. This basically connects the batteries in my chest to everything in the back. That just unclips. Put the chest over there. And just lie this down like that. Voila. Okay, so you'll notice like a bunch of buckles. Basically, these ones attach to my harness. This uh, I learned from a mistake early on when I was trying the suit on before the electronics, before the paint. It was just the raw print. Um, as soon as I put my like as soon as I stood up erect like straight on the back just straight up fell off of me and broke so I added these so I can clip it into my harness that way I don't have to worry about this falling off when the chest isn't on then these ones are just for the shoulders the arms and then I have this giant piece of foam which basically protects all of the electronics and keeps them in place because it's kind of uh yeah it's kind of a mess Thankfully, I have quite a few of these wires um, tagged or color-coded. That way, I know what's what. The reason why there are so many wires, I could have easily just put everything on the same ground and whatnot, but um, basically, I wanted to keep things as modular as possible. So basically, you'll notice that this little 3D printed box is the is for the smokers and the LEDs for the, um, the smoke machines, for the fog machines I designed. So if I open this... Kind of don't want to, but I'll show you anyways. Voila, there's an Arduino. Let me just close that back up. Then that's the one for the ailerons, another one for the missile launcher, and then the repulsor lights. I have another one in my chest for the arc reactor and the tiny lights, and I have another one in my helmet for the, well, the helmet. So that's six, count them, six Arduinos across my whole suit. It's a lot. So when planning your cuts, there are two things you want to do. Number one, you want to take a ruler and you want to line it up so it's perpendicular with the hinge of the actual thing you're trying to motorize. So let's say about here, that seems like a really good 90 degree angle. Place your ruler and you're going to draw a line with a Sharpie all the way down this ruler. Since it's going to be a raw print, or at least it should be a raw print when you're doing this, you can draw lines all over this thing. It's not going to matter because we're going to sand this down smooth when we get it ready for paint. So draw that line all the way down. And once you do that, go on the inside of your armor, take your servo, and just start looking at where the servo naturally wants to be. So you want to look for places that not only have room so it's comfortable when you're wearing the suit, um, you want to leave room for other things inside the armor so that it's not bunching up. So look for nice flat spaces like you see here. This seems to be a flat plane and when you're looking at the inside of the armor, it is pretty much a flat plane, making it ideal for mounting your servo mount for this whole system. And once you have a pretty good idea of where you want to mount the servo inside the suit, you can trace an outline of the servo both on the outside and on the inside. Um, ideally, we want to put the uh, gear on the line that we just drew, and that's gonna be the center of where we're gonna cut. So, you're gonna grab your Dremel, you're gonna line it up with that little dot we just drew for the gear, and that is exactly where you're gonna do your cut. You wanna leave a little bit of room on either sides of the servo, that way it can travel properly and it can close properly. That's all you need to do for now. As you start playing around with the actual hinge itself and making adjustments, 
then you can start making it wider on one side, wider on the other, and slowly but surely make this bigger. We don't wanna to go too big right away because it might be uselessly too big. I could have easily saved some material and not cut all of this out when I did mine. So you wanna make micro adjustments. You don't wanna do giant cuts right away, just slowly but surely start removing material as you go. And you can also use your soldering iron to like smooth these cuts out and remove material so it's not as sharp. Once your cut is complete and the servo arm can travel freely in that small hole you just made, now it's time to glue on uh, these servo mounts. You don't need to use like a crazy amount of super glue right away, just a little bit so that it stays on without falling off. That way, if you need to remove it and make micro adjustments, you still can. So you can either use super glue or hot glue for this. Now at this stage, you wanna print all of the different lengths of push arms because now we wanna find the ideal length of push arm. So you're gonna mount all of this. It doesn't need to be attached to the servo right away, but you just need to push the this lever and this lever up and down and just see where it sits on the actual aileron. And what will definitely happen with the shorter ones, if they're too short, of course, is you'll push up and your flat will barely go anywhere because it's not long enough. Like, let's see, from here to here, you maybe have five centimeters of lift so depending on where you mount it on the aileron, it might not move it at all. It will be negligible. But if you use a push arm that's way too long, it'll bulge up right here when it goes to close and it won't be able to close properly. It'll still be able to go up just fine. It might even go up and be like at max height like this. It won't even be able to extend all the way because there's just no room up here. But when it goes to close, if I can pull on this, it'll get stuck somewhere here, either because it's sticking out here or because it's sticking in here. Once you start finding the ideal length, you'll see that the uh, pivot point here will tend to rest at a certain spot without shifting too much. So not only do you want to find the ideal length of push arm, but you also want to find the ideal position of the pivot on the part that you're motorizing. So if it shifts around, you're probably, you probably don't have the correct length. Once you have the correct length, you'll notice that it'll stay relatively in the same spot. This is what we want. Now the last thing you're going to have to figure out is what angle does the pivot point like to rest? Because you'll notice we're pushing this way, but the part that we're motorizing is sloped, meaning it's on an angle. So you're going to need to use one of these. This is basically an angled slope. It has a little point in the center, which lines up with a hole on the back of the pivot, which allows you to lock them together and you could spin it in the right direction you need your angle. So you can fidget around with it, and once you have this mounted together, uh, you can glue it on with super glue or hot glue, nothing too permanent, and just link all of this together and start playing around with it and see how the whole system interacts with each other. If there's any binding or anything, you might need to make some more adjustments. Uh, if something breaks off, then clearly uh, you've done something wrong and you need to change something. It might be the length, it might be the position of this, heck, it might be the angle of the servo mount you need to shift slightly. But before we can start uh, finalizing the hinges and whatnot, it's time to go look at the computer and start checking out how we're gonna program this thing and how we're gonna wire it all. So for this project, we're not gonna be using the Crashworks helmet code, we're going to be using XL 97s helmet code. The reason why I went with this code is because I was a little bit more familiar with it and it's a little bit more simpler in the way that one, you can't control the servo speed and a few features like that. So it makes modifying the code a little easier. So I'm gonna be linking this RPF form in the description, that way you can find it. So we're gonna be taking this code and we're gonna be copying and pasting it into Arduino IDE. So just like any other project where you're motorizing something with servos, you're going to want to include the servo library in Arduino IDE, that way the code can actually work. Now, we're gonna go to servo object names, and you're gonna see that there are two servos here. Um, I think they're called servo one, servo two. We're going to rename them to top left and bottom left. This is just going to make it easier when we're actually wiring the thing, that way we know which servo is which. And all you have to do to add more servos is to just write down more servos. So you'll see, I'll go down, capital S, servo, oops, servi, servo, 
and then you can call it whatever you want and then semicolon, voila. Now you've just added another servo that you can call upon in your coding. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is to go down here to void setup where we're attaching all of our pins. You're gonna see we have top left attached to nine, pin nine attaches the servo on pin nine to the servo object. Bottom left, attach 10. If I'm not mistaken, servo one and servo two should be here. You absolutely need to rename them to whatever it is you're naming them, or you can just keep servo one, servo two, that's fine too. And same deal, write the exact same two servos you just add them and attach them to different pins. Um, in my case, I attach them to pin five and pin 11. Once all that is done, we can go down to the void loop, which is basically um, the code doing its thing. And we're just gonna scroll all the way down to, here it is, case S servo up. Normally you'll only have two of them being servo one, servo two, but in this case we have to modify it to bottom left, bottom right. And if you wanna add stuttering, so basically the ailerons like moving around like this in between both uh, the up state and the down state, you can just add um, delay command. So write down delay, and then in between brackets, um, you can add the milliseconds. So 350 milliseconds, semicolon, and then top left and top right will activate. And these here, as you should know if you've done helmets, and I'm hoping you've done helmets before, are the degrees that the servo can move to. There's a delay here, and then servo down. Now you'll see so I kind of swapped it around. So servo up is actually when it's closed and servo down is actually when they open. So you'll see I just used a bunch of delay commands to make it uh, stutter around and move around just like I wanted it to. And then finally it loops back around. So when you flip the switch, it'll close just like we had here for servo up. So it's just a question of renaming everything, making sure everything is named properly adding the servos you need, and then playing around with the degrees. The code should work just fine. I recommend you grab an Arduino Uno with a breadboard so you can test out the circuit itself. Not only to test out the circuit, but also to make sure that your servo is moving correctly. Especially if you're using high torque servos like the one I showed earlier. If it doesn't move in the right direction, it's going to break your parts because those are insanely strong. They won't just stall like these servos do. They will just break whatever's in front of them. It's that simple. So grab a bunch of, you can either, you can use uh, just some regular MG90. They don't even need to be metal. Just grab some plastic micro servos, lay them out on a table and just start testing, making sure that each servo is moving the way that you want it to. And then once you're ready, you can start uh, plugging them into the ones that are in your suit. Make sure that they are properly identified. You can either use um, tapes and just write whatever they're called on them. That way, when you're plugging them in, you're not incorrectly plugging the wrong servos to the wrong pins because that's going to lead to a disaster or what you can also do which i recommend is use color-coded tapes um electrical tapes like red green yellow black and that will allow you to make sure that you don't get confused when plugging them in now let's talk about how we're going to actually wire this thing I recommend you go check out Frankly Built's tutorial series on motorizing helmets because that is basically identical to what I did except for two main differences. Number one, your power sources for your servos and your Arduino need to be separate. You cannot power the servos off of the five volt pin on the Arduino. And in my case, I had to power the servos completely independently of the Arduino. The Arduino is in the back of the suit. It's being powered by a nine volt battery. The power that goes to the servos is this uh, power pack connected to a Penelope board. That way it never turns off. And that goes to the servos in my back. Why did I do this? Well, I'm not an electrical engineer, but for some reason, when I connected the power source to the Arduino and I would activate the servos, it would like flicker and then the Arduino would reset to the beginning of the servo code. And then that would just happen over and over again. I'm guessing the reason why is because the servos were demanding so much power all at once. Like, yeah, sure, it's five volts across four servos, but each one needed current that it was just 
messing up like the current going to the Arduino and like dropping it suddenly and it would basically like turn back on. So it would like flicker off and turn back on. So whenever you're wiring this, please use two independent battery sources. The only other thing I need to add is that of course, just like we did in the code, we need to solder two extra communication lines to digital five, I think, and digital nine. Uh, that's, yeah, exactly. Digital nine and digital five. So once you've finally done all of that, you've dealt with the code, you've tested the servos, you've made sure that your hinges and your pivots are all working fine and everything is working the way you want it to, you can finally start not only wiring up your Arduino, but you can also start uh, fusing in some of the hinges into place and some of the mounts into place with a soldering iron and maybe some extra CA glue to make sure that everything is filled. If you have any questions about the suit itself, any ideas for future videos, future projects, please let me know. It would really give me a good idea of what I should do next. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please hit that subscribe button. And while you're down there, please leave a like too. It really helped the channel. If you'd like to see any more of my content, I have a link in the description down below that goes to my TikTok and my Instagram. And if you'd like to support me, I also have a link to my coffee or Kofi. I don't, I don't know what it's called. please check out my Kofi in the description down below because as a broke university student, this was not a smart financial move at all. It was worth it though. And that's all I have to say for this video. So I hope to see you in the next one.